think I was going to uh, jump to animals. So the way you enter into information, um, we've kind of you create blocks, uh, and then you add animals, uh -huh. um, and it's just kind of the the way it's driven. You can enter the data as 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 along the tabs, uh -huh. but just to um, it's kind of you add the blocks where the animals are going to go, and then the animals need to eat the crops in their pasture. So it's just kind of a, a bit of a flow. But if you want to jump to fertilizer first, you always need to create blocks. But it's just. Uh -huh. Um, the way we've kind of had that structure and, and a yep. flow of entering. Everyone has their own quirks. Start they from like red, but you, when you say that though, you, you're putting in the block, you're not then going and putting animals for each individual block as no. such. You put in the total yes. stock and then you're going to assign yep. here and, when and, you're and yep. exactly as you ask that question. So yep. these are the, the different stock classes, mm -hmm. um, stock types on this block. This is a, a demonstration farm, so we've put in a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. so the numbers aren't real, um, but we just wanted to be able to show people what we can do. Uh -huh. um, so once uh, I'll go through the entering data, but as you're talking about was animal distribution. Uh -huh. So you can actually add animals to the block. So if you know that your deer are only on the, the, the flats um, during winter, then you can take them off. Uh -huh. Um, and this is quite important to get um, get right. Don't don't get caught up with animals went in this paddock um, during this month or this day. Mm -hmm. Kind of look at it at a, at a seasonal based mm -hmm. situation. And what you do on an on an average year. Mm -hmm. So um, if you've had a drought and things went terribly long, we're actually trying to drive what you aver on average what you do. Okay. Yep, so you don't have to do every season, every year updating as all of change. It's just what's my long term average or Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, and yeah, so it, it's about kind of it, it's it, I know people can't not necessarily remember what they've done in twenty twelve. Uh -huh. But just think about to what what have you actually you know, what, what's the average and what where would the animals be? Uh -huh. Um and if you know if nothing's on the wet block during winter then then that's what you'd do. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, at the, the top of every page you have a green block of what's the summary mm -hmm. of the information. So this is quite a good way of double checking, say if you had a consultant entering the information for you. It's quite an easy way, just run over the numbers. Do they look like what you're representing on your farm? Uh -huh. um, because it is uh, quite easy to add an extra zero when you don't mean to. So just double check that data. Uh -huh. Um, and this is something that farmers can do and we've changed the, the stock reconciliation that the way of entering data into overseas used to be quite different uh -huh. um, and it was um, quite time consuming double checking numbers so what we've done now is, is based on feedback from from users and I was one of them um, was looking at entering stock by a, an event uh -huh. so for a, a, a sheep and beef and or deer um, these are the types of things, that, these are the types of numbers that you actually have to hand. Uh -huh. And especially kind of when you're looking at lambs. And um, so you'll be able to have a look at your invoices. Uh -huh. um, so, so you know. When you, sorry, just. Sorry. When you say an event. Yes. I may, okay. What I mean by an event is an event is a scribe by overseer. Uh -huh. And it's. Um, so you have your starting numbers, uh -huh. which you'll have in your books or whatever it may be. And then you'll have, um, so it's whenever stock move onto the property or leave the property. Or are born. Or yes, or are born. Yeah. Any, so, any time the stock number changes. Is absolutely. Like, yeah. okay. um, and with, with lambs and calves, it's from weaning. So uh -huh. overseer calculates when they're at foot with, uh -huh. with the lactating animal. Um, and you can put in a, in a weaning event. So if you wean in, what have I put, November, uh -huh. um, then you can add that weaning number. Okay. Yep. So an event, it's not a physical movement of stock like you were just shown before. It, no, no, this is... Yep, it's but, but it's, numbers. You kind of think of, you know, what's on the property, what's involved in the mm -hmm. nutrient cycle. Um, if you've got lease animals that never enter the farm, uh -huh. um, that they're always grazed off, they don't need to be entered because they've actually never entered the farm nutrient yep. cycle. Um, so they don't need to be entered, but if anything that's on the property, that comes on the property and that leaves the property, obviously calcula uh, calculates the, the nutrients coming off and the nutrients um, kind of that are on on farm. So if you're looking at um, selling your prime names, mm -hmm. uh, you can look at the number. So you can, if you know you've got 200 going off, 
on the 24th of November, you can put in a default weight, you can put in your carcass weight, um, which is, I'm going to say it's a good size ham. And you can add all these in, so uh -huh. you can add in as, as many as you can. Um, we don't have a limit on that, so every event, every uh -huh. trading, um, this is where it's quite handy to see. Um, you'll be able to look at invoices, you double check what's going on. Uh -huh. And Oversea does all the work in the background to work out grazing days. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, and it'll have a, look, uh, have a look at what you're doing and you can cal uh, calculate that in the background. So we do all the hard work in the background uh -huh. for you. Okay. So you may get onto it, I suspect, I hope I'm not jumping ahead. So there you're putting in product weights, animals sold, animals weaned, that sort of thing. What about the capital stock and how big a U is? Because a U is a U is a U. Um, so you can um, put on as, so if you run a couple of different breeding uh -huh. uh, breeding U mobs, that's perfectly fine. You can add those in. Uh -huh. I've got one lot of Romney. Um, and you can put in, when you add the, the starting weight, uh -huh. yeah, the mature weight. So you can change this to, okay. to what you have. At the moment, I've just put in some solid Romneys. Yeah. Um, but yep. you can absolutely, if you know that you've got, if you run a light mob, um, you can change the weights. Yep. Uh, so all that information can be added. There are defaults, so if you don't know, don't worry, our uh -huh. FSE will, it will have some default weights. Yep. And same question again, how uh, you know, accurate information in is important for accurate information out, how big an impact does that have, the livestock weight? It does have an impact, especially okay. for um, uh, in your nutrient budget at the end, it'll have product leaving the, uh -huh. the property, so that calculates the kilos of meat left uh -huh. and, and, and the nitrogen and the phosphorus taken okay. off. Um, so that is quite accurate information is good uh -huh. if you don't have, if you don't weigh you use, but you kind of know what they weigh and you can justify that, then, yep. then put it in. Um, but we're definitely kind of driving um, the best you know. Uh -huh. But don't get too worried if you don't have it to hand, because anything you do can be changed. Uh -huh. cool. um, so you can come back and change things. If you think, actually, I've got this number wrong, then you can come back and change it. Yeah. And how do you have a grace? Can you do that for a year, two years, three years back, if you suddenly find an invoice or something stuck to the bottom of your desk? You can change any information at any time. Okay. Um, uh, where it comes into account. So if, the, if it's for a consent, mm -hmm. that's when you'd have to think about it a lot yep. more carefully. But if you're just doing it for farm decision support, mm -hmm. uh, you can change that as you needed. So if you kind of look at it, change over years, and you think, actually, I forgot that actually we, we changed from brown top to, to ryegrass mm -hmm. in that paddock. Um, you can go back and change that so you can get more accurate picture. Um, so what we've done, so we've changed the sheep numbers. Um, so you can see that that these are the stock numbers for the year. Mm -hmm. And it's the same information, but different, obviously different. Um, mm -hmm. So you have... Uh, velvet for deer and for, for beef is mm -hmm. a little bit different but essentially it's about uh, entering an event so be it a purchase or and for, for you can bring on dairy graces as well. Yeah and does it account for you know heifers you put on a lot of weight of them over their lifetime the same thing you need to put in entry and exit weights. Yes yep. uh, and you can do that for dairy grazing yep. and uh, just as a heads up dairy grazing is found under beef and okay. and an overseer, it's not separate. It's not considered dairy cows. Okay. But it yep. it, it will bring through dairy cows. If you want to. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that's just um, okay. it can you can be a little bit caught out looking for them. Yeah. <laughs> no, fair information. So what we have here is, um, if you do want to change uh, the animal distribution, you can actually go through and click when. They're not on. Okay, just simple as clicking. In Absolutely, and, out, yeah. and like I said, look at it at a season. Mm -hmm. um, if if you if that's your gut feel, so you can actually go through and say, actually, this is when my sheep are on, and it'll um, change the distribution. Do you need to put how many? No, no obviously it works it out. Pro rata about. Yep. So it's it's at a at a. A stock enterprise level, mm -hmm. um, so you can't assign um, the hoggets to the hills in winter. Okay. Um, you have to look at it at a as a stock class. Yeah. And I presume coming back, that's done that way because that doesn't have a major impact on the model outputs. It's it's just the way that the model runs at yeah. this point in time. Okay. It's um, you, you add the information, but we're not down to that level yet. Okay. 
Um, so the next thing you kind of Yeah, so what, because um, I've added a block that wasn't there before, mm -hmm. you'll see here that I, the model can't run because I haven't added information. Okay. It'll, each, um, each tab will kind of, if, it, if there's no exclamation mark, I can't mm -hmm. say that word, <laughs> yep. at, at the top, um, it means that the information is entered correctly. Okay. But at this point in time, I actually haven't added information for okay. that home block that I created. And that, yeah, that's thrown up just because you created a block, so yep. it won't let you... Good. It won't let me, uh, it, yeah. well, the information's there for the model, but uh, it can't run okay. without the, the required information. So that's what I need to add. So we've put in, um, this is to help guide you to make sure that you're entering the correct information mm -hmm. and that you don't leave, leave anything out. So what I need to do is scroll down to the home block. At the moment it says cut and carry, mm -hmm. um, and that's because there's no animals added to it. You yep. can have cut and carry blocks, you can have baleish blocks, it's how mm -hmm. you decide to block it at start. So I need to add pasture, um, and this is a quirk of the model that this is where you add the topography. Mm -hmm. And Overseer has some very specific characteristics around what topography is. Okay, yep. And what you want to look at, so if you do have a, a, a hill block, um, easy hill, um, so you kind of look at what the average topography mm -hmm. is. So the, the hill block actually might have some flats on the top, but if you treat it the same, um, same fertilizer, same sheep management, same oh. um, drainage, um, then I would treat it as a whole block uh -huh. uh, rather than um, blocking out the side lens because they're separate than the rest of the paddock. Uh -huh. Overseer takes it into account when it's doing hill blocks. Okay. So there's a bit of a you know a farm manager's judgment call on that's Absolutely. a hill block. It may have ten hectares of flats in it, but it's over that. it's 150 of hill, yeah. non cultivatable stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's all about how you treat it. If you don't treat those flats um, mm -hmm. any different, uh, however, if you do, I would block it out separately. Okay. But if you yeah. if if you are treating it as completely the same, there's no crop, there's no different fertilizer, there's no you don't add any nitrogen or whatever it may be. Treat it the same. Yeah. Um, and it, has, so it does have this kind of area most navigable uh, by tractor, so it kind of figures out how steep it is. Uh -huh. um, but at any point that you're having trouble with this, they can email me at helpdesk at overseer.org.nz yep. um, and I can help out, um, kind of give that a bit more definition. Yep. Oh, good. Well, we'll put that email address in the description, so <laughs> brace yourself, Carly. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. I keep getting busier. And um, so when you're looking at different pasture types, uh, these are the options overseer has mm -hmm. um, so at the moment we don't have things like plantain in the model yet mm -hmm. um, but there's been doing some science and some research um, and some modeling work to, to, to bring those types of things in but this is what you have at the moment um, it's a judgment call up to the, the farmer so if they, he's pretty confident that there's absolutely no clover that's when mm -hmm. you put it in but I said if if usually it's a ryegrass white clover mix I would go with what it usually is, yes. unless you can justify why it's not. Um, and there's a couple of tick boxes. This one here is really important. If you don't tick this, you can't put animals on. Ah, okay. um, and yeah. this is something that's caught me out when I first started. So um, why is that there? That's the way the... the For the cut and carry, if it's a hay or solid yep. block. Okay. So you can, um, so if you do have a, to that. A, a low certain cut and carry, you don't have to have animals on it. Yep. So if it's never grazed, mm -hmm. um, that's when you can do it. But if it is grazed, you need to add animals. Um, and this is information. Um, it'll bring up a, more information. So the runoff characteristics. Uh -huh. um, this pugging one's quite important. Um, so okay. have a look at what definitions it is. Um, and hopefully we, we add the defin definitions as we go. So it may never have actually been pugged, yep. but it, it's, you're talking about the potential of that soil type, etc. Is that what you're saying? Is it a... No, it's more, it's more about what you see. What do you see as a, as a farmer occurring okay. in that block? So yeah. if you see, so using the one, so if we choose occasional, then, you know, as Carly said, the farm that. manager or the owner knows that you have to be a wee bit careful mm -hmm. around how you manage that block during the winter. So you pick, tick occasional um, around that. And there's, there's some definitions in there which come up within the model. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's really, I think the, the, the two themes that run through all of the data entry for Overseer is, as Carly's been saying, it's either 
use what you've actually got in terms uh-huh. of real data or heaven forbid use common sense uh-huh. um, and, and if you use those two things together yeah. then you won't go far wrong um, and this is certainly one of the ones where it's use common sense and yeah it makes a little bit of difference depending on what animals you've got on that particular block but it's not a biggie really yeah it just came up yeah the cut and carry we've been talking about and obviously yeah. you're mm. never going to poke a cut and carry yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is why this these options don't yeah. come up yeah ah do they not yeah yeah um, and uh, there is other information there, but don't tick it unless you're confident that it's happening. Mm-hmm. So now you can see I've added the information um, and it's dropped out. And it's got some numbers. Yep. Now the, the model is running again. Um, and so what you can double check here is um, so what the the yield is shown and yield and overseer is based on the amount of animals that are able to eat that rather mm-hmm. than what you th- what potential you can grow on farm mm-hmm. so when you if you kind of cycling through anything actually I've um, put in, in ryegrass here instead of lucerne mm-hmm. and the tonnage doesn't change is because you haven't changed the stock numbers okay uh, so the way overseer drives its, its pasture is how much can the animals eat yeah it's very like there's a whole lot of science that goes in behind that, yep. but that very, very briefly, that's quite an important rule to okay. understand. Yes, yeah, so it's what's consumed and goes into the, the yes. cycling process. As opposed to kind of what you've grown on farm. It's probably one of the, the most common questions we get coming through to overseer when, when people start to use the model is exactly what Carly just said. I've changed my pasture type to something else, mm-hmm. I've changed my crop to something else, or I've changed my fertilizer input and my number hasn't changed. Why? not mm. and that's the key bit to know is that, that that production is driven by the number of animals that you've got on the farm okay. um, so you can double check kind of what the yield is uh, for different crops so you are able to add in fodder crops uh-huh. um, and you can uh, look at the hectares and the, and the yield that it's grown and um, we quite have a visual representation of the crops so you can actually have a look um, quite quickly if if you've entered this crop or someone's entered it for you you can have a look and see you know actually did I um, cultivate it in April if that's incorrect you can edit everything mm-hmm. um, so what you can do is have a name so that the fodder rotation it might be summer or winter feed um, when the months since fertilizer was last applied and um, with a, a fodder crop, if you've got it rotating through different um, pasture blocks, uh-huh. you can actually put it, as opposed to doing different fodder crops for, for different blocks, you can just ascribe it to a block. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where in that block it is. No, um, and Overseer assumes that it'll cycle through that. Okay. And uh, it's kind of ease of data entry. So you can, uh-huh. if you know that you have your kale rotating through those blocks for the next five years, you just copy that information through. You don't need to change it and you don't need to add it. Uh-huh. Um, everything in Overseer is, is editable. Um, so actually, if you yeah. think that the kale crop was, it was actually sweet, uh-huh. um, so you can change that. And you can change uh, when the month was sown, you can change the yield. So at the moment, uh, the typical, it'll give you an idea of typical yield for kale. Uh-huh. Um, so if you had a terrible year, you can put in six, uh, six, um, uh-huh. six tons. Or if you know it's actually a good year, you can put in 12. So everything can be changed. And we also have different cultivation practices. Um, so at the moment, there's only three. Uh-huh. So there's minimal till, direct drill, and conventional. Conventional kind of covers everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And minimal tail makes makes sense in direct drill, um, mm-hmm. and that does have some impact on, on on losses, so it's quite good. And also, if you've added a if you had a soil test before you crop, and you can add the soil mm-hmm. test there. Okay. Yeah. For that specific area. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't have it, it'll bring through the average for that block. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, if, and and that's like I said, it, it won't give you the option if if you haven't checked the box. Mm-hmm. And again, so it's highly customizable like right that but underneath it's also it sort of defaults from year to year it'll just take through what you've done in previous years but so people aren't having to do this from scratch absolutely every year. Good. um and and that's quite important with the fodder crop rotation mm-hmm. and the crop rotation um so what we've done i don't think we've got a, cro- a crop in here but if you've got um 
what say you've got you've got Swedes going into kale. Uh-huh. Um, if you copy this rotation through for the next year end, it'll bring through the Swedes and in, into this year. Uh-huh. So it brings through that information for you, so yep. you don't have to do that extra data entry anymore. Okay. And that's a really big um, big change from legacy software uh-huh. is that we've cut down on that data uh-huh. entry. The other bit that comes up quite often around crops is um, the question around cultivations um, at either end of the crop Um, and one of the key bits around that to be aware of is um, you only need to record the cultivation in the model if the cultivation is happening in a different month from when the crop is sown. So with this one we've got the crop being sown in April so the model assumes that Uh you've done some cultivation hence why I asked you what sort of cultivation have you done and it applies it in that month Uh and again it applies it, it for the next crop in, in at, at the end of the cycle to say again you've cultivated prior yeah. to in this case whatever we've got we've got some something else following on yeah. um, uh, so we've got pasture going in so uh-huh. it's assuming that we've cultivated again to go into pasture if we'd actually cultivated in March and then for some reason you know it had been wet in March and we hadn't then been able to get in and so we'd put the cultivation uh-huh. in as Carly's just done so you do it so it's often it's often a case where people will look at it and go hang on there's no cultivation in here what's happened it's that point yep. that the model is assuming has happened in the month that, that the crop was sown yep. unless you specify it otherwise and it'll give you prompts the whole way through if you haven't saved your data. Ah, okay. Um, so you can't enter a whole heap of information and not save it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would recommend um, don't do that. <laughs> really get in the habit of saving because yeah. we've all done it where we've updated the files oh, and not, yeah. not done it and regretted it later. Yeah. 